Hello. Today, I would like to talk to us about the need to be law abiding. As the Bible says, obey the laws of the land where you live. But sometimes, the fact that most of these laws actually threaten our willpower. Let's say, for instance, homosexuality used to be an aberration, used to be unlawful, used to be legitimate. But with the evolution of social consciousness, today, homosexuality has been legitimized or legalized. And we know what the Bible said about homosexuality. Now, the question is, can a Christian be a patriot and can a patriot be a Christian? If you obey what the Bible says about homosexuality, you will not walk on the same path with them. You will not walk on the same thing with them. You will not eat from the same plate with them. If you obey what the Bible says, you see the, the, the state will criminalize you. If you choose to, be, you know, to obey what the Bible says as a Christian, you end up being an offender or a criminal. But if you ignore what the state says and choose to obey what the Bible does, that's another ball of meat. Obeying what the Bible says concerning homosexuals actually is going to make you a criminal before the state. Yes. And obeying the state and ignoring what the Bible says makes you a sinner. So relatively, as a preacher, as a, as a deep thinker, as a philosopher, I find it cumbersome. Being a patriot and being a Christian. So which one supersedes? Which one is superior now? Should I be a Christian, choose to be a Christian, and ignore being a patriot, um, stop being patriotic? Or should I become patriotic and stop being a Christian? These are things that threaten my way power. We all knew what the Bible said. We all know what the Bible said about homosexuality. But given the recent evolution of consciousness, amendments to dif the different national laws, homosexuality is not legitimized. It's legalized. So you're no longer unlawful before the eyes of the state. But the Bible, the rules of the Bible is still the same yesterday, today, and forever. It has not changed. So should we have a new revised standard Bible as another issue? Is the state sinful? Is the Bible criminal? These are the things. How do one overcome sin and overcome crime? How do I make the state and religion, let me say politics, the state and religion, meet at the middle of the road? How do I become a patriot? And as well, become a practicing Christian. How do I free my conscience from the battles of religion and politics? These are basic things that threaten my weight power as a philosopher, as a late 20th century and early 21st century philosopher. There's a lot of incoherences, you know, there's a lot of contradictions. I found in evolution of consciousness. And there's, I found this a bit static as well. I found this a bit static. I don't want to talk about Quran now because Quran is those that I've discussed in my books. But let me use Bible, the one I can say I'm relatively an authority on, at least in teaching, interpretation, and all those things. So constitutionally, I find it vitiating, nullifying. Acidic, imbecilic, and atrocious, being patriotic as well as being a Christian. If I choose to, I just give a classic example homosexuality and the church. If I choose to obey the laws of the land, I'm in England, I'm in the United Kingdom, yeah. If I choose to obey the laws of the land, 21st century, you know, second decade of 21st century laws in modern England, modern United Kingdom, Great Britain, if I choose to obey the laws, which, which I invoke now, definitely, I'm automatically a sinner. 
going by the dictates or ethics in the Bible. And if I choose to obey the Bible and ignore the laws of the state, automatically, I'm a criminal before the state. So which way? How do I become a patriot and a Christian? A mighty God is a praise you do. This and other laws. I don't want to go into Islamic laws, amputation, you know, the barbarism, is in, you know, in amputation, in stoning, all those things, the hypocrisy, by God, the chauvinism, enshrined in Islamic ethics. Religion that puts women down and makes men demigods. Even Christianity does that as well. Christianity is a puts women down as well and elevates men. What is the fault of women? Where did women go wrong? Sometimes, I just want to read the course of religion and just relatively deal, deal with life as a free thinker. I'm an observer of human behavior and so, so much threatens my willpower. We live in a convoluted society. Society that where one needs some dosages of you know of moderation to really continue going. If not, some of us who have ended it along the way. We don't want to be we, we don't want to be killed. We take our own lives. Because there's so much. That's why enlightenment is very important. Again, through anthropology, sociology, you know, biology, economics, law, physics, anatomy, physiognomy. We find hydra headed problems. But what do we do? We are born empty and asked to be fulfilled. We are born sick and asked to be well. We are born ignorant and asked to be enlightened. What do we do? We don't need to give up. We need to keep on working. We need to keep on researching. We need to keep on investigating. We need to keep on moderating, assimilating, and to reach a synergy between religion and the politics, or religion and the state. I hope there will be a synergy. But most of us, who wish not to err, who wish to do well, who wish to be, to be obedient to both religion and the state, most of us found ourselves as priests of the unknown, priests of insecurity, as victims of this contradiction between Christianity and the state, or between religion and politics. I hope reasonable people will join me to begin to make sense out of what I just said. I find it difficult, relatively impossible, to be a patriot and be a Christian, or to be a Christian patriot or patriotic Christian. May God help us. May God help us as we begin to think over this. Thank you. Thank you.